Okay, so um, we are going to welcome. Welcome to everybody. It's nice to see that a lot of people were able to join today. As you know, these videos are recorded. We will be doing lesson four today. So we're talking about Romeo and Juliet. We will be finishing at two. Lesson four is at two, scenes four through six. So lesson four um, is at two, scenes four through six and it will help you answer the discussion questions for the rest of the week. Now, in regard to the discussion question, remember those questions close at 11.45 on Friday. So all the questions for this week will close at 11.45 p.m. on Friday evening. So that is your last opportunity. Make sure that you answer all of the questions. You wanna make sure not to lose any points, especially when it's such an easy assignment. Um, such as the discussion questions are. Okay, so I am reading this with the permission of Simon and Schuster, and here we go. Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home tonight, not to his father's. I spoke with his man. Why, that same pale, hard-hearted wench, that Rosaline, torments him so that he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman to old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master, how he dares being dared. Alas, poor Romeo, he is already dead, stabbed with the white wench's black eye run through the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bow boy's butt shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why? What is Tybalt? More than Prince of Cats. Oh, he's the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing prick song, keeps time, distance, and proportion. He rests his minim rests, one, two, and the third in your bosom. The very butcher of a silk button, a duelist, a duelist, a gentleman of the very first house of the first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Posado, the punto reverso, the hay. The what? The pox of such antic lisping affecting phantasms. These new tuners of accent. By Jesu, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good whore. <laughs> Why is not this a lamentable thing, grandsire, that we should be thus afflicted with these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these pardon me's, who stand so much on the new form that they cannot sit at ease on the old bench? Oh, their bones, their bones. Here comes Romeo. Here comes Romeo. Without his row, like a dried herring. Oh, flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified? Now is he for the numbers that Petrarch flowed in. Laura to his lady was a kitchen wench. Mary, she had a better love to berhyme mm -hmm. her. Dido, a dowdy. Cleopatra, a gypsy. Helen and Hero, Hildings and Harlots. Thisbe, a gray eye or so, but not to the purpose. Signor Romeo, bonjour. There's a French salutation to your French slop. <laughs> you gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. All right, so here's Mercutio, you know, being Mercutio. And the first thing he does is, well, they're talking about Tybalt, who sends a challenge over to Romeo's house. So Tybalt is very mad that Romeo kind of snuck into that party. He crashed the party, I think is what it's called, right? Crashing a party. And so he sent the challenge over to dual Romeo. And so he's quite upset about that. So if he's first, he's talking about that. And then he sees Romeo approaching and he says, he compares, he talks about Laura, Dido, Cleopatra, Helen, and Hero in this last stanza, right? Without his role, like a dried herring, oh flesh, flesh, how are thou fishify? Um, he says, numbers that Patrick flowed in, Laura to his lady was but a kitchen wench. So he mentions these women, Laura, Dido, Cleopatra, and Helen, who are they? Do you know who they are? If you do, write it in your chat box. Who are these women that he mentions? <clears throat> so 
So if you're thinking Laura, Dido, Cleopatra, Helen, and Hero are all famous, beautiful women in literature and history, then you are correct. Basically, Mercutio still thinks that Romeo is in love with Rosaline, and he's saying that to Romeo, um, these famous, beautiful women, Cleopatra, you should have gotten that one, guys, Dido, Helen, these famous, beautiful women are nothing but kitchen wenches. So in other words, they're like kitchen slaves, kitchen workers, you know, they're nothing compared to what Rosaline is. We, of course, know that Romeo is over Rosaline. He's not into her anymore, and now he is head over heels in love with Juliet. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, good Mercutio, my business was great, and in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. That's a All right, so Mercutio's like, well, you gave us the counterfeit last night. What is he talking about? What does he mean by the counterfeit last night? Go ahead and write that in your chat box, please. <clears throat> What's one definition that we know that counterfeit is? Tell me that definition, and then tell me how he uses it. Yes, exactly. So if you're saying that counterfeit is a fake, and if you're saying that counterfeit is a fake, and then you're also saying that he's using it to say, oh, you kind of faked out on us last night, you, you abandoned us last night, then you're correct. And then he says, the slip, the slip, right? So what definitions do we have of the word slip? And then how is he using it? He also goes on to say, there's a few of them. He says, curtsy and curtsy, right? And then he says, he says a few of them. So let's look at these word plays that he uses. This is a discussion question. So this is a good point to highlight and to write in your notes if you're listening along. As much as to say such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hams. <laughs> Meaning to curtsy. Thou hast most kindly hit it. A most courteous exposition. Nay, I am the very pink of courtesy. Pink for flower. Right. Why then is my pump well flowered? Sure wit. Follow me this jest now till thou hast worn out thy pump, that when the single soul of it is worn, the jest may remain, after the wearing, solely singular. Oh, single-souled jest. Solely singular for the singleness. Come between us, good Benvolio, my wit. Faint. Switch and spurs. Switch and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Nay, if our wits are on the wild goose chase, I am done. For thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five. <laughs> Was I with you there for the goose? Thou was never with me for anything when thou was not there for the goose. I will bite. This is an old term. Um, it was used a lot like in the 80s and 90 goose. What is it? If you goose somebody, what does that mean? Right? If you goose somebody, usually it's to pinch their bottom. It's what it is, right? If you goose somebody. If you pinch their bottom, or you can use it as like the goose, you know, like the animal right? Or like you would eat a goose, especially back in the Renaissance days, right? So he's using words kind of funny and he's using them to mean like they have double meanings. Bite thee by the ear for that jest. Nay, good goose, bite not. <laughs> Thy wit is a very bitter sweeting. It is a most sharp sauce. And is it not then well served into a sweet goose? Oh, here's a wit of chevril that stretches from an inch narrow to an L broad. I stretch it out for that word broad, which added to the goose proves thee far and wide a broad goose. <laughs> Why is not this better now than groaning for love? Mm. Now art thou sociable! Now art thou Romeo! He's happy, Mercutio's happy because, you know, Romeo is going back and forth with him. Like, they're like messing around, they're using words and double meanings, and he's kind of joking back with him. And Mercutio's happy, why? Because he sees, you know, that Romeo is finally getting over Rosaline. He's like, wow, you're yourself again. You're not like this. You're not a bummer anymore. 
Now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. For this driveling love is like a great natural that runs lolling up and down to hide his bobble in a hole. Stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hair. Thou wouldst else have made thy tail large. Oh, thou art deceived. I would have made it short, for I was come to the whole depth of my tail, and meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. Here's goodly gear. A sail, a sail. Two, two, a shirt and a smile. Mark. Peter? Anon. My fan, Peter. Good Peter, to hide her face, for her fan's the fairer face. Oh. <laughs> God, you good morrow. So this is the nurse approaching, and right away as the nurse approaches, Mercutio kind of makes a uh, comment about her face. Right away, like he's like attacking right away. So let's listen. Gentlemen. God, ye good e'en, fair <laughs> gentlewoman. Is it good in? Tis no less, I tell you, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. Out <laughs> upon you! What a man are you! One gentlewoman that God hath made, himself to mar. By my troth, it is well said for himself to mar, quoth he. <laughs> Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you, but young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. I am the youngest of that name, for fault of a worse. You say well. Yea, is the worst well? No. Very well took, if faith, wisely. Wisely. <laughs> if you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. She will indict him to some supper. Abroad! Oh. Abroad! Oh. Abroad! Oh. So ho! What hast thou found? No hair, sir, unless a hair, sir, in a Lenten pie that is something stale and whore, ere it be spent. Oh. <laughs> an old hair whore, and an old hair whore is a very good meat in Lent. Oh. But a hair that is this whore is too much for a score when it whores ere it be spent. <laughs> okay, so how does Mercutio treat the nurse when he first meets her? Does he A, does he adore her and want her to be his mom? B, does he mistakenly think that she's Rosaline? Or C, does he make rude jokes about her? Which one of those does he do? Go ahead and write it in your chat box. Yes, good job, guys. Most of you seem to be getting it. All right, here we go. <laughs> Romeo, will you come to your father's? We'll to dinner thither. <laughs> I will follow you. Oh. Farewell, ancient lady. Oh. Farewell, lady. Oh. Lady, <gasps> lady. <laughs> I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his rupery? A gentleman nurse that loves to hear himself talk and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. And he speak anything against me, I'll take him down, and he were lustier than he is, and twenty such jacks. And if I cannot, I'll find those that shall. Scurvy knave. I am none of his flirt gills. I am none of his skeins, mates. Oh. No! And thou must stand by too and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure. No! Oh. I saw no man use you at his pleasure. If I had, my weapon should quickly have been out. I warrant you, I dare draw as soon as another man, if I see occasion in a good quarrel and the law on my side. God, now afore God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Oh, scurvy knave! Pray you, sir, a word. And, as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire you out. What she bid me say, I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell you, if you should lead her in a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say. For the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman and very weak dealing. Nurse. Commend me to thy lady and mistress. I, I protest unto thee. Good heart, and if faith I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse? Thou dost not mark me. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her devise <laughs> some means to come to shrift this afternoon, and there she shall, at Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. <gasps> Okay, so what did he just tell her? What instructions did he just give her to tell Juliet? And the word shrift means confession. And in the Catholic faith, in the Catholic faith, 
before you get married, you should, you have to confess. So you have to confess all your sins to the priest. That's one of the, the sacraments. So what is Romeo telling the nurse to tell Juliet? Go ahead and write that in your comments. Let me make sure that you understand. That is one of the discussion questions. Yeah, he's basically saying, so if you are saying to, yeah, so if you're saying that Romeo is telling the nurse to tell Juliet to make up an excuse to go to confession or to go to church that afternoon, then you're absolutely correct. He's saying that once she gets to church, the friar will marry us. So those are the instructions. Make an excuse up to go to a confession to the church this afternoon. And when you get to church, the, we'll be married. The Romeo and Juliet will be married. Here is for thy pains. Oh, no, truly, sir, not a penny. Oh, go to, I say you shall. Oh, this afternoon, sir. Well, she shall be there. And stay, good nurse, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour, my man shall be with thee and bring thee cords made like a tackled stair. Which to the high top gallant of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. Oh. Farewell. Be trusty, and I'll quit thy pains. Farewell. Commend me to thy mistress. Now, God in heaven, bless thee. Oh, hark you, sir. What sayest thou, my dear nurse? Is your man secret? Did you ne'er hear say, two may keep counsel putting one away? Warrant thee, my man's as true as steel. Well, sir, my mistress is the sweet. That, that is a very famous saying, is your man's secret? Did you never hear say, two may keep counsel, putting one away? And that's a saying that we still use today. Not quite like that, but we say that two people can keep a secret if one of them is dead. That's exactly the same thing that she is saying right there. Sweetest lady, Lord, Lord, when t'was a little prating thing. Oh, there is a nobleman in town, one Paris, that would fain lay knife aboard, but she good soul had as lief see a toad, a very toad, as see him. I anger her sometimes, and tell her that Paris is the proper man, but I'll warrant you when I say so, she looks as pale as any clout in the versal world. Doth not Rosemary and Romeo begin both with a letter? I, nurse, what of that, both with an R? Ah, mocker, that's the dog's name. R is for the... No, I know it begins with some other letter, and she hath the prettiest sententious of it, of you and Rosemary, that it would do you good to hear it. Commend me to thy lady. Aye, a thousand times. Peter? Anon. Before and apace. Okay, so the nurse also gives away what? That who else wants to marry Juliet? Go ahead and write that in your chat box. Yeah, so the nurse tells Romeo that, oh, there's another guy who wants to marry Juliet. His name is Paris. But, you know, she doesn't, every time I mention him, her, her face goes pale and she doesn't really like him. Sometimes I kid around with her and I tell her that she should marry Paris, that he's the better man. But, you know, I'm just kidding is what the nurse tells Romeo. Okay, so we're about to start scene five. Scene five is in Capulet's Orchard. Juliet is a nervous wreck, having waited for more than three hours for the nurse to return. Remember, that she told the nurse, go and find out about Romeo, and it's been three hours. Um, when the nurse does arrive, she simply won't come to the point. Juliet gets more and more upset until the nurse finally reveals the wedding arrangement. Listen. <laughs> The clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour, she promised to return. Perchance she cannot meet him. That's not so. Oh, she is lame. Love's heralds should be thoughts, which ten times faster glides than the sun's beams, driving back shadows over lowering hills. Therefore do nimble-pinioned doves draw love, and therefore hath the wind swift cupid wings. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is... So what time is it now? Go ahead and write that in your chat box. 
the sun yes it is noon it is 12 p.m you're absolutely right the sun is at its highest point three long hours yet she is not come had she affection how long has the nurse been gone for how many hours very good and warm youthful blood she would be as swift in motion as a ball my words would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me but old folks many fain as they were dead unwieldy slow heavy and pale as lead oh god she comes oh honey nurse what news hast thou met with him send thy man away peter stay at the gate now good sweet nurse <clears throat> oh lord why looks thou sad mm -hmm. Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shamest the music of sweet news by playing it to me with so sour a face. I am a weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. What a jaunt have I. I would thou hadst my bones and I thy news. Nay, come, I pray thee, speak. Good, good nurse, speak. Jesu, what haste. Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse that... So she's trying to get the nurse to talk and the nurse is kind of beating around the bush and she's like, don't you see that I'm out of breath? I can't talk right now. And she's like, how are you telling me that you can't talk right now and that you're out of breath when you're telling me that you can't talk right now? And you're talking right now to tell me it. Thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either, and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied, is it good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo? No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his leg excels all men's, and for a hand and a foot and a body, though they be not to be talked on, yet they are past compare. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. Go thy ways, wench, serve God. What, have you dined at home? No, no, but all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches. What a head have I. Oh, it beats as it would fall in twenty pieces. Oh, my back. Oh, oh, to other side. Oh, my back, my back. Beshrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. Your faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me what says my love. Your love says, like an honest gentleman and a courteous and a kind and a handsome, and I warrant a virtuous, where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest! Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady dear, are you so hot? Marry, come up, I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Henceforward, do your... What's funny about the way that the nurse is treating Juliet? So, what is funny about the scene? Go ahead and write that in your chat box as we listen along. Messages yourself. You're such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. <laughs> <laughs> now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. <laughs> They'll be in scarlet straight at any news. Hie you to church. I must another way to fetch a ladder by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. <laughs> I am the drudge and toil in your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon at night. <laughs> Go, I'll to dinner, hie you to the cell. High to high fortune. Mm. Honest nurse, farewell. So what's so funny about the way that the nurses treating Juliet in the scene. That is a discussion question. You'll be 
Yeah, so if you're saying that she's not getting to the point, that she's kind of beating around the bush, that she's just like, oh, my back hurts, my neck hurts, my head hurts, like, you know, um, it's kind of funny. And then she changes the subject to, like, um, is it, what's your mother? And she changes the subject a bunch of times. If that's what you're saying, then you're absolutely right. Okay, so we are about to start scene six. And scene six is in Friar Lawrence's cell. Remember, this is back in the monastery, back at church. Friar Lawrence cautions Romeo to be more sensible in his love for Juliet when she arrives. The two confess their love for each other and are prepared to be married by Friar Lawrence. Okay, let's listen. <laughs> So smile the heavens upon this holy act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Amen. Amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words and love devouring death, do what he dare. It is enough I may but call her mine. These violent delights have violent. So the first question would be, is Romeo fearful of his future? Write down the line, and we just listen to it in this little first passage that Romeo has here um, that proves what your answer is. So is Romeo fearful of the future, yes or no? And then tell me what he says that makes you think that he is not afraid of the future. <clears throat> So if you're saying no, that is correct. Romeo is not fearful of the future. What does he say that leads us to believe that he is not fearful of what's going to happen? Yeah, he says, so if I see the word death. Um, he says, then love devouring death, do what he dare. So basically, he's kind of like threatening death or kind of not threatening, but, you know, saying, hey, do what you want, taunting death. If enough, I may call her mine. So, yeah, just do what you dare, whatever. I dare you do something. And, end, and in their triumph, die mm -hmm. like fire and powder, which as they kiss, consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in his own deliciousness and in the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore, love moderately. Long love doth so. Too swift arrives as tardy. This is very, very good advice by the friar. Um, in your own words, explain the friar's warning in these lines. These violent delights have violent ends and in their triumph die like fire and powder, which as they kiss consume. What is the friar saying there? What is he saying about love? Right there. Go ahead and write that in your chat box, please. Yeah, he's telling them, he's, he's warning them to slow down, that it's dangerous, that loving somebody so quickly and sharply like that means that love will end quickly and sharply as well. The intense type of love consumes itself with the heat like gunpowder um, is burning up by fire when they touch. The friar is trying to warn Romeo that he should contain his passion, that he should slow down a little bit. Okay, let's listen. Be as too slow. Here comes the lady. Oh. And he just said, um, therefore love moderate. Long, long love does so. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. So what does that mean? Explain those messages. He is telling him to do what? So if, again, if you're saying to slow down, that it's just as bad to go too fast as it is to slow, you have to time, it's all about timing, right? Have you heard that before? Love is all about timing. You have to make sure that you time it right. You don't want to go too fast and you, you know, it's, it's just as bad to go as too fast as it is to slow. Okay. Oh, 
so light a foot will ne'er wear out the everlasting flint. Mm. A lover may bestride the gossamers that idles in the wanton summer air and yet not fall. So light is vanity. Good even to my ghostly confessor. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him else is his thanks too much. Ah, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. Conceit more rich in matter than in words brags of his substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth. But my true love is grown to such excess, I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. Mm. Come, come with me, and we will make short work. For by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. So what happens at the end of this scene? Go ahead and write that in your chat box. They do, if you said they get married, absolutely they do get married, but they don't get married on stage. Romeo and Juliet do not get married on stage. They get married off stage. Basically, they see each other and they start kissing and the friar kind of stops them and he's like, no, 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 come with me and, um, you know, like, let's get you married, like, let's get this done. Um, but they do get married off stage. They secretly get married off stage. The audience does not see this happen. Um, at least not in the play. Okay, guys, that is the end of Act Two. We are almost there at the very end. Actually, um, I'm assuming that you're finding Romeo a little bit easier than what you thought it was going to be. Romeo and Juliet a little easier than what you thought it was going to be. If you are, please write it in your chat box. I am interested in knowing your thoughts. We've come to the end of this video. Remember, the discussion questions will be open to 11. 45 p.m. on Friday. So you have until 11.45 p.m. on Friday to answer all of the discussion questions. And again, thank you for joining me. And bye, guys. Take care. Let me know if you have questions. I'm available on Instagram.